Right, we continue our discussion on reaction to the Brackenfell High School chaos that unfolded. The school is at the center of a racist, uh, racism scandal after it emerged that parents and some teachers held an unofficial and private matric dance. The event was not open to everyone and was attended only by white pupils. Now, this incident has triggered protest action from the EFF, in turn leading to clashes with parents and local community members. Joining me to analyze the, the turn of events and really expand on the different positions here is Jack Miller of the Cape Party as well as a spokesperson of the Western Cape in the EFF, Wandile Kasibe. Uh, Kasibe. Gentlemen, a very good morning to you. Thank you for your time. Jack, uh, I'd like to start with you. Just uh, give us a sense of uh, the reason why you thought it important to come out uh, and show your, your, yourselves during this protest. Well, uh, good morning, Mpo, and um, you know, uh, good to talk to you today. Um, yeah, you know, I think <laughs> let's start with the facts. You know, the EFF said that um, black students were excluded from a matriculant uh, party, and that's factually incorrect. What actually happened was it was a private party uh, conducted by students and, uh, and parents. An invitation was sent out to the entire class of all skin colors uh, the cost of the event, I think the, the organizers need to, needed to charge the attendees about 500 rand per head. Um, the students that did come uh, were of different racial groups. There happened to be students there with brown skin, as if we even need to talk about this in the 21st century. Uh, but there were kids, yeah, with, with uh, darker hues of skin at this party. And the students that didn't uh, attend were ones that either didn't want to go or uh, weren't prepared to pay the 500 rand. So the EFF took something that was not racist and did what they tend to do with regards to everything in this country, and that is make it about race. And the Cape Party is so sick and tired after 26 years. You know, the ANC said that uh, it promised us a dream of a rainbow nation in 1994. And here we are 26 years later, uh, heckling over, over matters like this. So it's very disappointing. And unfortunately, you know, the EFF uh, seems to take political opportunities here and uh, try to uh, speak to their voter base by inflaming racial hatred and racial tensions. And uh, we at the K Party wanted to oppose that and say that we stand for racial unity um, and we want to support the school kids the parents and the residents of Brackenfell. And as I'm sure you and, and all your viewers are aware, the K Party believes in a true rainbow nation uh, right here in an independent Western Cape. Um, Jack, you, you say darker hues of color. Am I uh, right to assume that you mean black uh, learners or are you talking about um, white people who may be olive skin tone? Just give me an understanding there when you say you have information that uh, there were darker hues of color. Uh, learners who attended this, this uh, matric farewell party. And for, you know, thank you for saying that. You know, it, that's how ridiculous it is. Yeah, let's, let's say that uh, a white person with a good uh, suntan, uh, you know, qualifies as a, as a different ethnic group. You know, this is how absurd it is. Um, yes, there, there were um, from reports from the, the students and the parents um, who organized the event, um, I understand that there were students who you might refer to as brown skinned or, or, or cape colored. So, uh, yes, if, if that's what needs to, if those boxes need to be ticked in order to uh, satisfy the racial um, uh, divisions that, that people are trying to stoke, then yes, there were people there of different skin colors. Okay, I don't think you've answered my question correctly, but anyway, I just want to get uh, the EFF's uh, Wandile to, to also get involved in this conversation. Wandile, you've been listening in to what Jack Miller has had to say. What is your reaction to, to some of those comments that he's making? Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, it's, it's difficult to sit here and listen to a buffoon here. Here, we're talking about serious issues here. We cannot sit here and pretend as if race is not a problem in this country. Race is a primary contradiction in South Africa. The reason, the reason why he's where he is today is because of the, you know, the, the pigmentation of his skin. He's been getting privileges here since the dawn, since they arrived here in 1652, using 
you know, their skin pigmentation as an advantage to undermine the dignity of black people here. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend as if race is not a problem in this country. Hence, we're saying as the EFF, we're not going to allow any racist here to think that they will undermine the dignity of black people. What happened at Bragenfell, at Bragenfell High cannot be condoned. Black people were excluded there initially. He must go and check his facts. Black people were excluded here. Yeah, that's the reason why EFF was written to by those black learners and those black parents. And we intervened and we went to the school and wanted to have a discussion with the principal and the SGB. And we were attacked by those white racists there whilst we we're trying to have a conversation with the school to understand all the issues around this matter. We went there again and were attacked by those racists. And we we're saying as the EFF, we're not going to fold our arms here when our people's dignity is being undermined. Hence, we went there and yesterday we went there as the EF whilst they were saying that we should not go to Brackenfell. Brackenfell is not a white conclave. There is no place here in this country that is coded off for white people. As EFF, we said we would go to Brackenfell and we went to Brackenfell. And there's nothing you know, that racists will say to us that will deter us from exposing the ugly face of racism in this country. So we're not going to sit here and listen to buffoons such as this one telling us about you know, the fact that race doesn't matter. Race does matter in this country because it has some you know, material benefits for people like himself. Jack, as, as we listen to, to what Wandila had to say, you earlier said that uh, you see this as an opportunity uh, for the EFF uh, taking it uh, as a political opportunity. Are you, are you saying that racism does not exist in the school and within the Western Cape, even if we have uh, past learners who've spoken about the manner in which they've been treated in that school? And, uh, of course, uh, racism is a huge problem. Are you saying that it doesn't exist? No, I'm, I'm not saying that. Racism does exist, and uh, it exists in the form of the EFF, absolutely, and it exists in, in many different forms. And, and we at the Cape Party condemn any form of racism. So, you know, th there'll be areas of overlap where I will agree with Wandile, uh, and uh, there are certain acts of racism which are just unacceptable and, and we, we cannot live with. But the EFF... To, <laughs> How can they say with a straight face that they are fighting racism? Uh, these, this organization is hell-bent on putting all of their energy into stoking racial divisions uh, in this country. And, uh, you know, so, so yes, race, race is a problem, but race is primarily a problem because it's become a political issue in this country. And it's politically um, expedient for organizations like the ANC and the EFF to make race an issue in this country. It's a, it's a scapegoat to um, escape responsibility for the failings of the South African government over the last 26 years. You know, they like to talk about the legacy of apartheid. You know, the fact that we're living in this country 26 years later and the economy is in the shape it's in. Education is in the shape it's in. Uh, you know, infrastructure is in the shape it's in. We, you know, we, we, we're lucky if electricity comes on and water comes out the tap. You know, it doesn't matter what your skin color is. We deserve better than this for South African citizens. So let's look at one of our favorite examples. So 94 was a key turning point in the country. Jack, sorry, if, if and, you allow me to interrupt you there for the sake of time, you're saying that uh, race is a political issue. What do you mean by that? And also, what does your party stand for? Um, you know, we, we, we saw you springing up during Brackenfell, but uh, where, where does your party originate from and, and what, what drives it? What does it stand for? Okay, so the K Party was founded in 2007. And we were founded out of a disillusionment with where the country was going. We were disillusioned with the DA. We were disillusioned with uh, uh, the other political parties out there. We were disillusioned with the ANC and where they were taking the country. So we believed that, uh, obviously, we, we were told what South Africa was supposed to be. But um, by 2007, it was clear to us that this is not where South Africa was going. We were not going to have a rainbow nation. So we founded the K-Party uh, with a vision to make the Western Cape an independent country. 
the Western Cape is the most ethnically diverse region uh, in South Africa. We have a majority language, which is Afrikaans. Uh, we have a political ideology, which is different to the rest of South Africa. The Western Cape is the only province that votes against um, the socialist, communist, and African nationalist policies that we see from both the ANC and the EFF. So there are, there are multiple levels in which the Western Cape is different to other parts of South Africa. And so we how, believe how so? in good relations. How so? I mean, if, if your aim is to make the Western Cape an independent country, what message are you sending there? Who, is it inclusive or exclusive? What are the components of, of that statement on its own? An independent Cape would be absolutely inclusive. It would be a country that we've all been dreaming of. And, you know, there's many people that we get contacted by from other parts of, the, uh, other parts of South Africa, black, white, colored, Indian, Asian, saying, if you guys make the Cape independent, we are moving down there. And you know what? These people are welcome. It's a difference in political and ideological belief. People who want to put um, race behind them. And I, I was earlier going to mention um, an, an important example here. So in 94, we had an opportunity to take two different pathways. We've taken the pathway to destruction. We could have taken a pathway. We still have an opportunity, uh, which is why our first hope would be to negotiate with parties like the ANC and EFF uh, to decentralize power, to reduce their racially discriminative policies here in the Western Cape. And... Um, only then, if they aren't willing to negotiate, we would then like to have a referendum to see if the majority of people in the Western Cape would like to be independent. And in that independent Cape, we would look to countries like Singapore. For example, Singapore also suffered under colonialism, just like we suffered under colonialism here. And let, let me get this straight. The Cape Party is not in favor, I mean, because some people, they get this mixed up. The EFF is like, oh, well, you like an apartheid party. Absolutely not. The Cape Party is opposed to the ANC regime. We are opposed to the uh, apartheid regime. Okay, Jack, and um, I I'm going to have to interrupt you there. We wa I want this conversation to continue. I am still on the line there. Uh, Jack Miller of the Cape Party, as well as Wandile Kasimbe um, of the EFF. In the I'm on the line, joined by Jack Miller of the Cape Party, as well as a spokesperson of the Western Cape and the EFF, Wandile Kasibe. Wandile, I'd like to get some reaction from you. We've been listening to Jack Miller speaking about uh, um, the vision of the Cape Party, saying that their aim is to make the Western Cape an independent country, and also saying that race is a, a political issue. What, are, what is your response to that? Um, our response is very simple to this thing. I mean, you have a group of people here who suffer from the nostalgia of the Buddha Republic. They want to create a separate state within a state. What kind of a nonsense is that? They must return back the land that they stole from African people. When the Anfan Ripik arrived here in 1652, there was no peace negotiation between African people and him. There was a full-blown confrontation that took place seven years later after he arrived here the Khoi Dutch confrontation that took place here. We can even go as far back as even 1510 when the Portuguese arrived here under the directorship of, uh, you know, uh, of Almeida. They wanted to usurp this land by force and they were attacked by African people. So what we are saying here, the battle that we wage in here is an ongoing struggle, it's an intergenerational struggle. Our forebears fought in defense of this land. And our forebears laid down their lives defending this land from invaders who came from the West. What we are saying here as African people, we have been, you know, uh, you know uh, suffering for all these centuries, for all these years. And now we are sitting here listening to somebody here who says race does not exist. In fact, we are making a racist issue out of nothing. When African people's dignity is being undermined by white races. What we are saying here, this is not a joke. This is not a circus. Our people's lives are at risk. And young people who are coming out here expressing and detailing their experiences, you know, of racism at schools such as Brackenfell High are being, you know, threatened. There's, there are death threats that are being leveled at these young people. They are very young. They're expressing how racism is affecting them in their school. And now we're listening to somebody here who makes jokes out of a very serious issue here. Young people are being threatened here 
Their lives are being threatened by those white racists. What we are saying here, this, this battle that we wage here, it is an ongoing, is an ongoing battle. Racism has been so institutionalized and embedded in society. As the EFF was saying, we are not the ANC. We are, we are not part and parcel of the arrangement, the neo-colonial arrangement that was made by the ANC and the white racists in this country. We are going to face racists head on and we're not going to massage over the feelings of white racists in this country. The time has come because we take a very clear instructions from Franz Fanon who says, each generation must out of relative obscurity, discover its mission, fulfill it or betray it. As the EFF, we're not in a position to betray our generational mission. Our generational mission is clear. We will restore the dignity of the African child. Whether racists want it or not, whether they like it or not, we will restore the dignity of the African people. And we are saying here, there also comes a time in the life of any nation when the people are confronted with two choices, either to fight or to retreat. This time around, we are not going to fold our arms when racists come and attack us. We will defend ourselves. We will fight back. What we are saying here, Racism still exists, especially in the Western Cape. Western Cape has become an epicenter of racism and racists. All of them, they come here a form, the last bastion, the last, you know, defense for racism and apartheid. And we have a group such as this one here who are suffering from the nostalgia of the Bure Republic. That nonsense is not going to happen. We are saying as African people, we want our land back and that land will be returned back. As EFF, we are not going to fold our arms and be quiet when our people's dignity is being undermined. Jack, um, you know, as you listen to, to Wandile speak, um, you know, it, it brings me to the, the Cape Party itself. How many black people are in the Cape Party? Well, we don't have a racial census, so we don't count. But if you, if you look at our social media support, I don't know, you could... You could call it, I don't, I'd say it's probably a fairly relatively accurate uh, reflection of the demographics of the Western Cape. So, so, you, you, yeah. so, so you're saying, so there are white uh, and black people, uh, there are black people within the Cape Party. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. There's white, black, brown, Indian, Asian. We, we've got supporters of of all different ethnicities. Does it not concern you, Jack, um, you know, when you listen to some of the, 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 the hurts that come out of former pupils of the Brackenfell High School saying that they were uh, treated differently because of their, their racial uh, dynamics, because they were either black or colored, that they didn't get the same preferences as, as their white uh, um, you know, fellow learners in the school? Does that not concern you? No, it, it does concern me. And, and, and children are, are very sensitive. It's a very sensitive time in one's life. And, and I think that when politics is pushing race down our throats every single day, you know, young children are very uh, persuadable. And, and um, you know, I mentioned this sort of in, in I'm sorry passing to interrupt yesterday. you there, Jack. How is politics pushing race down our throats. I, I don't understand that because, you know, politicians are perhaps bringing a, a, a focus and an emphasis to, to this matter that is really serious, that really has a serious impact on people's lives. I, I don't understand what you mean when you say uh, politics, um, you know, are, are, are politicians are pushing the racial agenda. Does racism not exist? No, it absolutely does. And, and, and that might be your perspective and the EFS perspective, but that's certainly not our perspective. And, and there's different ways of looking at this. Does race exist? Of course, race exists. But what I'm trying to say here is that if you have groups like, and, and I, I mean, we probably don't have enough time for me to answer everything that Wendela said. I would love to talk about the history of South Africa, the history of the Cape. There's a lot of very important things that he mentioned there, and we need to talk about it. This is the thing. We need to have dialogue. And this is one of our concerns with the EFF is that they don't seem to be open for dialogue. You know, we'd love to negotiate with them and the ANC and talk about, listen, what are your concerns? What are our concerns? This is, we don't exist for no reason. I'll tell you what, the Cape Party would never have been formed if the ANC 
or the DA were doing their jobs. Neither the ANC nor the DA are doing a good job, and that's why we form. So, you know, we have problems, and, and I, where I will agree with, with Wandile is uh, we both obviously have a concern with the way the ANC has governed this country, and we have a deep concern about poverty in this country. Perhaps we differ in why there's poverty in this country and how we can fix poverty, but these are concerns we both share. And you can't find solutions if you're just shouting bad white man, bad white man all the time. You know, and, and I wanted to talk about Singapore earlier and how they had similar problems. They also suffered under colonialism. They had different religions, different ethnic groups. And Lee Kuan Yew took Singapore from 1965, within a decade, took it from being a muddy island to being one of the most prosperous countries in the world. And it's, it's one of the most prosperous countries today. So why I'm saying that race is a political issue is that the government and the EFF are using this to further their political agenda. They believe, either fairly or not, in certain policies which we think are destructive. We, in fact, we think these types of policies is why there's so much poverty in, in the country at the moment. We believe that different policies would bring up the standards of living of all people, of all different skin colors. And I'd love to express my views to Wandile and, 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 uh, and the ANC and say, listen, we think your economic policies are wrong. We think your political policies are wrong. We think we can better all races in this country with these types of policies, but we can't have a debate. And this is why I say, uh, um, a race is a political issue in this country because the, it stops right there. He doesn't want to hear what I have to say because I'm a wicked colonialist white man, but I actually have views that he might find interesting, but he, he's not willing, willing to listen to it because he doesn't like my skin color. Wendila, what do you have to say to that uh, very quickly as we wrap up this discussion? I mean, as the EFF, we, we really you know, don't have time to have discussions with racists here or racist apologies, people who apologize you know, for, you know for, for racism here. He went on here when we started with this conversation denying the existence of racism. Only when I pointed out certain things that he started to agree on those issues. Now, we really need to be serious about what we are saying here because racism does exist in this country and a lot of white people have benefited from the existence of racism. It has become so subtle in the Western Cape it has become so institutionalized in the Western Cape. And he knows that. The reason why he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't want to accept here and is because he will be exposing himself. Racism exists in the Western Cape. It exists in places where people work. It exists in schools. It exists at universities. That's the reason why, as the EFF, we are standing up to say that not racism anymore. We are not going to allow that nonsense. We are not going to allow a situation where our people's dignity is being undermined. Hence, we are saying here, there are a lot of, you know, white people who think that here, you know, they come and try to sanitize and try to silent people who speak out against racism because they know for sure that, uh, you know, they have securities here, they have social security, they, they live in, in well-off areas, they live in areas that are, that are rich, and these people have been accumulating wealth for years and they've accumulated wealth for their children, whilst black people and the majority of this country are living in, in, in poverty. They are living in squalors, and the land, you know, has not been returned back to our people. We are talking about millions of black people here who are landless, because land was taken, you know, from them through the barrel of a gun. And today we listen to someone here who says racism does not exist. Now you okay, think that the EFF I'm now is Dilla, going to sit down and have discussion with someone like that. No, we don't have time. We don't have time for fools here. For the, for, for the sake of time, gentlemen, I want to thank you both for your time. Jack Miller, leader of the Cape Party, and Wandile Kasibe, a spokesperson of the Western Cape in uh, the EFF in the Western Cape. Of course, uh, uh, wrapping up that discussion.